you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Dav Road. You know, you know what I was thinking when I was queuing up in the pouring rain for three hours, waiting for the privilege of paying a fortune to be cramped into a tiny seat and breaking my teeth on stale popcorn. Don't you just love going to the cinema? My <laughs> local cinema, so small, you know, the chocolate ice lady comes round on her hands and knees. <laughs> I'd rather stay in and watch Barry Norman. Good evening and uh, welcome to another edition of Film 90 and goodbye. <laughs> later, in <the> show, <laughs> later in the show, I'll be reviewing the new film highlighting the lack of Arsenal football shown on TV. It's called The Gunners Are Never On. <laughs> we'll also be talking to Oliver Reed, a first class actor and why not? Sorry, a first class actor and why no? <laughs> There really are some first-class actors in this country, like Michael Caine, he's my favourite. Do you know, do you know, I'm so versatile, right? I've got an accent for every point of the compass. North London, South London, East London. <laughs> I've just finished my latest film in which I play a great ape who terrorises the old Kent Road. It's called Pearly King Kong. And not a lot of people know that. <laughs> then, of course, there's Sean Connolly. My name's Bond. James Bond. And I'd just like to say that you're a shite. A shake for short eyes. <laughs> you know, I've just finished my latest film. I play a rough, tough sheriff who's hired to get rid of a wild bunch of yuppies. It's called Gunfight at the OKR Corral. <laughs> then, of course, there's uh, the big American actors like Dustin Hoffman. I'm a really good actor. I'm a really good actor. <laughs> I'm in 485 films. 492, I think it was. Anyway, at the last count, I don't know. But anyway, I remember the first time I, remember the first time I started in a film. I played the clapperboard. <laughs> it just didn't click. <laughs> Or was it clack or click? I don't know. <laughs> Should have rehearsed that line. Instead of Trevor Howard, you could have Frankie out in Mutiny on the Bounty. Oh, no, yes. Oh! <laughs> Mr. Christian, you'll be well hung from the highest yard. Of, yes. <laughs> or Jack Douglas instead of Michael Douglas in Fatal. <laughs> 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 Or you could even have Clive James as a movie star. Could you imagine Clive James? Because I come from down under, they offered me a part in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> they wanted me to play Kansas. <laughs> what about Julian Clary in The African Queen? Could you imagine that? Hello. Mm. <laughs> you know, they offered me a huge liner, but I said I'd prefer a little tug. <laughs> Why that keeps happening. <laughs> I don't know, I'm really browned off at the moment. What's happening? Well, it's just that everything looks a bit black, you know. <laughs> That's pretty in your office, it? everything looking black. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose so. If you want to put it in black and white. <laughs> I suppose that uh, makes you blue, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, everything looking black and you being browned off. Is it, Bobby? Yes. Yes, in a nutshell, that is why I'm blue. Like the song says, Blue, blue, blue my world is blue. <laughs> blue is the But uh, last week, you were in the pink. Yeah, that's right. Last week, I was in the pink for one very good reason. And what was that then? Well, I was going through a bit of a purple patch, wasn't I? <laughs> so what happened? How come from being in the pink in the middle of a purple patch you saw black and got so brown off that you're blue. I don't know, Bob. Bit of a grey area, really. What, between the purple patch and things looking black? Yeah. Nothing worse than a grey area. Uh, you know, when I get in a grey area, I, I, I just see red, me. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I never see red. But you know why that is, don't you? Cos you're yellow. <laughs> me? Yellow? Yeah. Never. I'm a green, me. <laughs> Green, the only time you've been green is when I pulled that bird you fancied in the Peckham Youth Club disco. <laughs> what was her name? Magenta. <laughs> Magenta. Anyway, forget about it. Have another drink, eh? A pint of the old amber nectar. No, no, not now I'm a green. Oh, and well, what do greens drink then? Orange. <laughs> orange? Orange? You expect me to stand here chatting to a yellow, blue, brown, off green with an orange through things are looking black because he's been through a purple patch of gold, see red? <laughs> 
right, Bob? Yeah, I'm just a bit off colour, mate. <laughs> Hello, old Bean. I've just come to read you a bedtime story. Uh... <laughs> Are you sitting comfortably? Uh, then I shall begin. <laughs> Once upon a time, uh, there were three members of an endangered species, uh, which hadn't as yet been shot by my father. <laughs> there was Mummy Bear, uh, Daddy Bear, <laughs> Little Heir to the Throne Bear, otherwise known as Hair Bear. <laughs> Anyway, they lived in a little heist in the middle of the woods, presumably to avoid paying their poll tax. <laughs> Which, to my mind, is a grossly unfair tax put upon the poorer members of our society. <laughs> I mean, I've been sorry for the family. I mean, I watch it. <laughs> anyway, to cut a long story short, a young debutante by the name of Goldilocks, pretty little thing, she got lost in the woods one day. She stopped outside the heist. <laughs> My God, she exclaimed, who designed this monstrous carbuncle? I'm going to make a really horrid speech next time I address the Royal Institute of British Architects. Anyway, Goldilocks went inside of the heist and noticed on the table three bowls of porridge. She cried, where's the caviar and the Bollinger? She'd be much better off with a crick. Organically grown vegetables. Anyway, that's all there was. So she ate it all up and went off upstairs to look for the four poster. <laughs> These were the three members of the endangered species returned from a game of polo in the woods. Jolly good game. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Who's been eating one's porridge? said Daddy Bear. Who's been eating one's porridge? <laughs> Pretty good voice, eh? <laughs> Eating one's porridge, said Mummy Bar. Stuff the porridge, said Hair. <laughs> Didn't someone mention champagne? Bollinger, said Baby Bear. <laughs> oh, yes, they did, said Baby Bear. <laughs> Shh, whispered Mummy Bear. Who's that snoring upstairs? It must be one of the servants, replied Daddy Bear. But we haven't got any servants, replied Mummy Bear. <laughs> we have now, said Daddy Bear. <laughs> as he locked Goldilocks into the bedroom. So they all lived happily ever after. All except Goldilocks, that is, who spent the rest of her days kissing strange frogs and hoping for the best. <laughs> anyway, uh, the next story is a Little Red Riding Hood. Now, ooh. Daddy wants trying to sleep. I'm terribly sorry, Harry. I'll tell you what. I'll take the plant in the other bedroom, eh? The next video is from New Rimps on the Block. You have just returned from a massive pop-up book signing session at Mother Care. So, ladies and gentlemen, children, baby, and fetuses, let us welcome the New Rimps on the Block.
Robert will be sadly missed by all his family and close friends. And also by his fellow team members in the Olympic bobsleigh team. And so it is with... As I was saying... Robinson, as I live and breathe. How the devil are you, matey? I'm fine. And how the devil are you, Reggie O'Cow? Fine, yes. Well, by the way, what are you doing on Friday? Uh, we're going to Tesco's, aren't we, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name's Sean Connery, and I'm here to tell you about my latest video. The Sean Connery Guide to Acting, in which I impart the incredible wealth of knowledge that I've accumulated about screen acting in over 30 years of cinema superstardom. <laughs> You'll learn how to use my many very different accents and make them sound totally convincing, such as my French accent. <sighs> Their name's Bond, Jacques Bond. <laughs> then there's my Russian accent. The name's Bond, Yuri Bond. And, of course, my extremely tricky Chinese accent. The name's Connolly. Sean Connolly. <laughs> and, of course, there's the facial expressions which have been vital in projecting with the cinema superstardom. You'll see Connolly pain. Ouch. <laughs> and Connolly love. And a flame with desire, my dearest. I'm about to lose control of my senses. <laughs> and the unforgettable Connery expression of blood-curdling rage. <laughs> Where is my tea? <laughs> yes, the Sean Connery Guide to Acting will show you all this and much, much more. Like how to completely mispronounce the letter S. So you two can sound just like me. <laughs> yes, the Sean Connery Guide to Acting. Retailing it to seven pounds, seventy-seven p. Contains everything I know about screen acting. It lasts a full four minutes. Buy it now. Why, hey! Gaz is in him, and footy's me game. You know, a lot of people are surprised to see I'm still about. They thought I'd end up like George Best. Why, hey? I wouldn't mind, you know, because he's a millionaire again now, you know. He's just taking all his empties back. <laughs> but 1990 was a great, great year, you know. I remember first off, right, there was the World Cup. Then there was uh, cuddling Mrs. Thatch, you know, Mrs. Thatch, the lovely lady, like, you know, before she was shown the red card, of course. <laughs> and then there was receiving player of the year. Not for footy mind, for gurning. Because <laughs> I'm always pulling faces, you know. Do you remember when I stuck my tongue out during the national anthem and a lot of people thought I was being a cheeky little monkey? Well, what do you expect when my initials are PG? <laughs> Gaza, Gaza, but what about the World Cup? I'm glad World War II wasn't decided on penalties, you know. Because <laughs> a lot of people... A lot of people, you know, are always saying to me, Gaza, man, you must be pretty cheesed off with a referee like who gave you the booking in the semi-final of the World Cup. I say, no, man, he's a friend of mine now, you know. Last week, he sent me an invitation to his mum and dad's wedding. <laughs> I started crying at the end of the match, like, and I touched the nation's heart. Well, I'm always crying, like, I can't help it, I'm always screaming <laughs> up, like, you know. <laughs> Why, I, Tenny Venable, said to me, Gazza, man, if you keep crying like that, the pitch will become waterlogged. I said, don't worry, boss, you'll be here to bring your sob on, won't you? <laughs> but, you know... Oh, no. Gazza's gonna gurn again. <laughs> 
But it's great to be playing down south, you know, because my old club, Newcastle, why aye, they made a lot of money, you know, when they sold me. Why aye, they made so much money that they're turning their ground into an old seat stadium. They're having the three-piece suite delivered on Friday. <laughs> Anyway, I can't hang around here all afternoon, you know. I've got to go and get ready to do a bit of modelling, you know. I'm a model, you know. I'm doing a photo session for one of the biggest games going. <laughs> <laughs> Why, I, I know what you're thinking. Gather, man. You must be off your rocker. a stranger, I kill him. Uh, no. I kill him. I kill him like a big fat squealing pink pig. <laughs> okay, but baggy me the big fat squealing pink pig's boots. <laughs> well, you got the boots last time. See? Exactly. <laughs> hey, Gringo! Howdy. I'm a stranger in town. We don't like strangers here. We call them pigs. Why? Because we always go the whole hog. <laughs> you know where I can get a bed and breakfast? Dead man's God has no guest house. Try the next town. You're a liar, mister. Sit right here in my guide. There's several recommended places. Your guide must be out of date, gringo. I want a room, an ensuite facility, and an evening meal. Guess I'll look around for myself. I told you to stop playing. It's the end of the song. <laughs> well, howdy, big boy. <laughs> howdy, stranger. I'm Diamond Lil. Well, by the look of your man, you look more like Double Diamond Lil. <laughs> Is that a travel line on your palm show, or you're just pleased to see me? It's a travel line. <laughs> Let me smooth your wrinkles away. Nobody irons my poncho except for me. You gotta be real careful with Terry Talley. <laughs> so what can I do for you, mister? Do you have a room with ensuite facilities and an evening meal? Yeah, 20 bucks a night. That's mighty expensive for a roof over your head. Who said anything about a roof? <laughs> the biggest hotel in Arizona. With ample free parking. Pretty music in all the lifts. <laughs> Every room has its own mini bar. And they call me trouser place. <laughs> you have a conference room with a dance floor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Was it planning permission? I didn't think so. I'll stick with the room I got right here. Pity you won't get a chance to use it. Pig. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gringo. When the lovely music stops, you go for your gun.
fancy shooting, stranger. Why, thank you, ma'am. You must be tired out. Want me to come to your room and show you how the bed works? No. <laughs> I gotta be moving on. Pity, we'd make a great team. Drifting from town to town, killing Mexicans ain't no life for a woman. Mm. You don't know what it's like. The rooms with no tea's maids, the endless continental breakfasts, <laughs> and the receptionist with green fingernails called Julie. <laughs> Maybe I'll see you around. Maybe, ma'am. Maybe. Excuse me, Pig. Uh, all we wanted to do was show you our new glossy brochure. <laughs> Better see if there's any vacancies at Boot Hill. <laughs> Can we go again at that one? <laughs> oh, 